Hi, we have to take a moment for some shameless self-promotion. On Friday and Saturday, 15 and 16 September 2023, the crew and I will have a couple of tables at the gun show at the Lions Club in the city of Lake Ozark, Missouri. Now that's the city of Lake Ozark, not to be confused with the body of water, Lake of the Ozarks, which of course is really close to the city of Lake Ozark. It's only a two-day show, Friday and Saturday, but we'll have a couple of tables, we'll have some t-shirts, we'll have the guns on display, we'll tell some anecdotes that may not be fit for telling in this format. Come out and say hi, it should be fun. Okay, let's get to today's presentation. Hi, we're out on our range today, and once again, no, you haven't won a prize, that's a scam. Now, what I have is three different types of ammunition. I have Remington Green and White Box 9x19, 115 grain full metal jacket round nose, Winchester White Box 38 Special, 130 grain full metal jacket flat nose, and CCI Mini Mag 22 long rifle 36 grain hollow point. Now, over here, I have the exact same three ammunitions. In fact, the Remington on both sides came out of the same box. The Winchester on both sides came out of the same box. And although our two mini mag ammunitions are in different boxes, a lot of times when you get them at the store, these boxes 100 are in a cardboard box that's five boxes 100. So they really did come out of the same box. I bought all of these ammunitions at the same store on the same day about a year ago. The difference is the ammunitions on your left have been stored in my house in a cool, dry place. The ones on your right have been stored in a car in my driveway. So while these have been at pretty constant humidity, which has been fairly low, these have been exposed to very low humidity in the summer and very high humidity in the winter. While these have been at a pretty much constant temperature, these ammunitions have been out in the winter where the temperature was in the single digits Fahrenheit and in the summer where the temperature was in the triple digits Fahrenheit. And while these have, except for today's trip to the range, remained pretty much motionless, these have been driven thousands of miles. So the question will be, to what degree have those extremes in temperature and those differences in humidity and that motion had a detrimental effect on these ammunitions. And what we're going to measure is accuracy, velocity, and reliability. Now I have a fairly small sample size, so we can't do a lot with reliability, but we'll do what we can. And we have to note that these have been in cool, dry place. These have been in the car for, as of today, 360 days. So let's go to the target and see what we can learn. I'll shoot this target from a distance of about 20 yards, and I'm going to use my Beretta 92FS, and we'll start with our house ammunition. This one really is just me, but not a bad group. Now I have the shot holes pasted up and I'll go back 20 yards and I'll shoot this target with our car ammunition and we'll see how the groups compare. And there you have it. And this shot, yes, really is just me. So if being in the car affected our accuracy, it wasn't by much. However, even though being in the car does not seem to have affected our accuracy, you may have noticed I had one failure to fire. When the hammer fell and that round failed to fire, 
I just pulled the trigger again and it still failed to fire. So we do have so far one dud. Now let's try another type of ammo. Now I have a new target set up and I'll shoot this from 20 yards with our Winchester White Box 38 Special 130 grain full metal jacket flat nose and my test firearm will be the Smith & Wesson Model 15 with a 4 inch barrel. It's important to note that this is not the ammunition I used to zero this firearm. So we don't need to concern ourselves so much with the location of the group as we do with the size of the group. And again, we'll start with the house ammunition. and our accuracy is not bad. Now I have the shot holes pasted up and I have the revolver loaded with the car ammunition. Let's shoot this from 20 yards and see how the groups compare. Again, no apparent effect on accuracy. Now this group does seem a little bigger, but that's really just me. And now we'll shoot our CCI Mini Mag 22 long rifle, 36 grain hollow point. The test firearm will be my Ruger 1022 takedown. I'll shoot this target from 20 yards. And again, we'll start with the house ammunition. And our group looks okay. This is two impacts. This shot over here really is just me. Now we've got our shot holes pasted up. We have the 1022 loaded with the car ammunition. Let's shoot this from 20 yards and see how our groups compare. Now this group actually is a little bigger, but is that because I was shaky? Is that because these pasties threw off my aiming point a little bit? I'll put up a new target and we'll shoot this group again. And there you go. So if there is any detrimental effect in accuracy, it's minimal. So to what extent, if any, will being in the car for that long have caused our ammunition to lose power? I've got the chronograph set up at about seven yards and we'll start with the nine millimeter and I'm gonna start with the house ammunition. 1092. 1094. 1107, 1058, 1084, and 1070. Let's see how that compares to the car ammo. And now the 9mm car ammunition. 1106, 1118, 1107, 1121, 1094, and 1070. 
Let's try our 38 ammo. And now our 38 special ammunition. And again, we'll start with the house ammo. Seven sixty-three. Seven fifty-three. Seven fifty-five. Seven thirty-eight. And seven seventy-six. Now let's try our car ammo. And now our thirty-eight special car ammo. Seven twenty five, seven seventy eight, seven seventy four, seven sixty six, seven fifty five, and seven forty three. Now let's try our twenty two ammo. And now our CCI Minimag 22 long rifle, and again we'll start with the house ammo. 1303. 1285. 1288. 1312. 1337, 1303, and 1289. Now let's see how that compares to the car ammo. And now finally our 22 long rifle car ammo. 1296. 1276, 1258, 1313, duplicate 1313, 1306, 1283, and 1274. Let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and here they are. And of course it comes with the normal caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like ambient temperature and elevation can affect chronograph results. Also, what I typically do is stand here and read off the numbers and people have been telling me they're having trouble seeing numbers. So we're going to do something a little different and that is we're gonna give you a close up of the chart and you won't have to look at me. Now when we look at our chart, we see that our 9x19 that was in the house has a mean velocity of 1,082. In the car, 1,102. 20 feet per second more? Okay, that seems like it may have gained power. That's really within the variation of one round to the next, not enough difference to make a difference. In our 38 special, we see in the house, 757. In the car, 756. Again, not enough difference to make a difference. Well within the variation of one round to the next. With our 22 long rifle, we go from 1302 to 1289. That's a loss of 13 feet per second. Well within the variation of one round to the next, not enough difference to make a difference. So what do these numbers really tell us? is that after 360 days in my car, it looks like our ammunition has not lost any power at all. But what about reliability? Let's take a look at that. Now, as far as reliability of the ammunition that's been in the car, as I said earlier, we don't really have a big sample size, but I'll shoot the ammunition we do have and see what we can learn from it. Now that's a malfunction, but that did not have anything to do with the ammunition not going off. So it looks like that's pretty reliable. As far as the nine millimeter, well, remember earlier we had one round that didn't go off 
but right now it looks like we're doing okay. Let me reload my magazines. Now I'll shoot up my remaining car 9mm ammo. And yes, I intentionally ran that dry. And what we see is, of the whole box of ammo that had been in the car, as far as 9mm, we had one failure to fire. So if there's any loss in reliability, again, it's not that much. But what about the 38? Well, that'll take longer to shoot, so I'll shoot that without having you sit through it. Now, when it comes to the reliability of the ammunition, we had 100 rounds of 22 long rifle left in the car for 360 days. All 100 rounds went off, and in comparing the accuracy and power of them, no significant loss in either. With the 9mm ammunition, for some reason the box wasn't full. There was only 46 rounds that I'd left in the car for 360 days. And we saw no significant loss in power or accuracy, but in terms of reliability, we did have one failure to fire. Now with the 38 Special, there were 50 rounds left in the car. I fired a lot of those off camera just as a time-saving measure. But again, what we ended up seeing was no loss in accuracy, no loss in power, but of those 50 rounds, we did have one failure to fire. So it would appear with this small sample size that being left in the car, you might have some loss in reliability after a while. And I would have to speculate that if the time period that the ammunition had been left in the car was longer, we might have greater loss in reliability. But the bottom line here is, it comes down to power accuracy, still okay, reliability becomes questionable. So especially under humid conditions, I would advise not leaving ammunition in a car for a long time. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the what happens when you leave your ammo in the car for a year video.